Uh, the next thing we're going to do, again, if you think about the fact that we're building out from the bottom of the miniature, uh, some people call it dressing the miniature, imagining what uh, the miniature would be putting on. Um, so the next thing would be the leather armor. So she seems she's got these leather arm pads. She's got a leather um, chest armor that seems to come down here below her belt. And I'll probably do the shoes the same color. And I'm thinking about doing this. There's kind of a raised hem on her on her dress, and just to help tie things together from the top of the miniature down to the bottom of the miniature, uh, I think I'm going to do that in the same brown that I do the do the, the leather areas. So I'm gonna start base coating that next. I'm gonna do that in a mixture of a scale color brown leather with just a touch of the flat black. I do really like the brown leather color. Um, it's just in its purest form, it's a little red for what I want. And so I'm just gonna add just a touch of black. It'll knock down the redness a little bit, desaturate it just a touch and create a really nice neutral, more neutral brown for us. So to do the next part of the leather, to start lightening it, and again, building those textures, we're gonna go back and glaze over, we're gonna create some shadows, similar to what we did with some of the other parts in the model. But because this is leather, I actually wanna give it more texture than I gave other parts. So you'll notice that when I'm doing these next coats, I'm almost, I'm gonna kinda of be like stippling or, or roughly coating areas. I'm not gonna be as nice, smooth uh, brush strokes to finish areas off. Because ultimately what I want is to, I want there to be a lot of little little dots of color and, and uh, little scratches or things like that in the armor. So then as we, as we uh, finish it off, um, it'll just look like a nice, interesting texture that'll be different than from the texture that we have on the cloth or on the skin. And it'll help to distinguish it as, as a leather material. This is a spot you could dry brush if you want to. Um, one thing I found is that if you do dry brushing for this phase, it sometimes ends up looking a little more like wood than leather when you're done. And I'm generally following similar principles to any layering or highlighting where I'm leaving a little bit more shadows each time I, I go up a layer. 
working my way towards the highest points of the model where the light would be concentrated. So we have the texture built up now. Uh, there's going to be, just before I do the, the start to glaze over and um, bring this back into a nice brown, uh, I'm going to take a black. And this is where I want to put in just a little, a couple little dots here and there, maybe a few little tiny scratches. This is just where you add a little more character to the armor. You make it feel lived in. There's really no particular rule to this. I just put a few black dots here and there. If there's, if there's room to do it, maybe a longer scratch. You're just kind of giving the impression of little imperfections in the leather or little divots, places where the armor's been scratched a little bit. So I'm going I'm to mix up something similar to my base color. So starting with uh, brown leather, add just a touch of that black to it. Mix up a nice thin glaze. And again, the idea of this is it's not a wash. We're not slathering it on in a, in a, with a lot of paint on our brush and letting it run into all the crevices. We're doing this in a more controlled manner. So we are, we're gonna apply it thinly and without too much paint on our brush. And we're gonna try to prevent it from pooling. So if you find you've got a little too much in an area, just dab your, your paint brush on a paper towel, get off most of the, the paint and go back and, and soak up what you don't want to be there. And so even with this first pass, you should start seeing the richness of the leather returning as opposed to that more desaturated, light, uh, white color. You probably notice that when I load my brush in this, I, I do tap the paper towel. I get most of the paint off because again, I don't, I don't want this to come off like a wash. I really want to be under control. You don't have to worry about the direction of your paintbrush too much with this. I've talked about moving your brush in the direction of your raised areas or your um, your highlight or your shadow areas depending on whether you're going lighter or darker. You don't have to worry about that too much with this. You're trying to put a nice even, even glaze over everything. And there's no there's no set number of passes. You just do it until you feel like if you do it one more time, it would be too much. That's the best way I can describe it. Do it till you see those, those layers of the stippling start to 
start to meld together a little bit to where you can just see some texture. But things haven't gotten too uniform where it looks like it's just back to your base color. So we finished glazing with the leather color. Uh, you can see that, that that more rich brown tone has returned, but we have the highlights built in with that texture we've added. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift to back to the pure black. I still have it here on my palette. So I'm just going to mix up a glaze with the flat black. And we're going to do the same principle. This time we're going to be doing a shading, however. So same idea. We're going to get some on our brush. We're going to get most of it off by tapping on a paper towel. This time you do want to be careful of the direction that you're, you're moving your brush. So I'm going to be moving all my strokes down into the, shot, the recessed areas. So places where there would be shadows. You can reinforce some of the, the areas where we left darker. So you should see now after glazing in some of that black, we've really brought in those shadows and we've created some uh, differentiation between the highlighted areas and where we're gonna get some shadows. One thing I'm gonna do right before I end, this is not a necessary step. If you wanna skip this, you can, but I'm gonna take a little bit of purple and my favorite is Sunset Purple from Scale Color. And I'm actually gonna glaze a little bit of purple right down into those same shadows where I just glazed the black. And it's very, very subtle, and, it, and it's another thing that may not pick up well on camera, especially not on the first pass or two. But it's something that it's, it's just going to trigger the human eye when you look at the miniature. It just creates a little more depth to those shadows. There's a little color, a little visual interest, um, rather than just being brown leather. It creates just a nice little, little tone to the shadows. So I finished glazing in the purple. Uh, again, this may not be something that picks up well on camera, and it's even really subtle to the eye, but it, it just creates a little tone in the shadows. This is a, a step you can skip if you, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to put in the time or to do it.